One of my favorite modders said something along the lines of, uh, when you start getting comfortable, you stop getting better. So, that really resonated with me, and, uh, you know, I, I, I think he's right. And, you know, I'm always looking for more fun stuff to do. I've never limited my channel to Game Boys, um, but I made a decision that I'm going to start getting into switch modding and repair. And I went in deep. So I bought a switch. Um, I'm going to start light. I'm only starting with one. And I do still have my old switch. This one is uh, working perfectly. But we're going to use this one as a test mule for this thing so I can determine, you know, what's what's actually broken and, and what's what's not broken. Uh, because there are several problems um, and I will need to resolve at least two of them before I can determine how functional this thing is. So let's start with the basics. I bought this on eBay. I probably overpaid a little, but I was looking to get some Joy-Cons anyway. Uh, and just unless I got super lucky I was looking at at least 60 bucks for that and you know a hundred more and I got myself a relatively clean looking switch tablet uh, so I went for it it was a unit it was about 160 bucks before shipping I did not know this beforehand um, and I haven't fully checked this out yet it is an XAW switch but I did check the serial number already and it looks like it might be a patched unit. So unfortunately that means no homebrew, but worst case scenario, I have an unpatched one right here and I don't even have custom firmware or anything on this one. So I'm, I'm, I'm not too concerned about that. But what drew me to this unit in particular, besides the price and, and having some extra Joy-Cons, um, was the particular problem. Now the seller states that the left Joy-Con would not connect to the switch. Um, and so to combat that, they did a factory reset of the switch. They also said that the switch was working perfectly. Um, I have my concerns, but we'll, we'll get there. Um, let's start with some preliminary hardware inspections. Uh, before I start plugging stuff into this thing, I want to make sure the stuff I plug in isn't going to blow up. So we're going to check out the USB-C port. I did already check this out. I don't see any mangled pins. The port itself does look to be in pretty good shape. Um, next, I wanted to check, you know, it says the left Joy-Con doesn't connect to the system. so. My first thought is, well, how does the rail look? And if you look down the rail, you can't see squat because that's really hard to capture on camera. And it's really hard to capture, like just to even see in person. But I did inspect the pins inside the rail itself and they do look good. Now I can't really get in there and look at it from the contact side. So it's hard to say for sure, but that's what this switch is for. If I determine that the rail is the issue, I'll just swap the rails between these two, and if that resolves my issue, then I just need a new rail for this thing. Uh, but the pins look good on both sides, uh, so it's not likely to be the rail. Um, now, looking at this more in depth, looking at the Joy-Con itself, I have a feeling, problem is probably not the tablet, um, the seller didn't do a very good job of disclosing the condition of the Joy-Con. You might notice there's a bit of a bulge. I'm fairly certain this is OEM, uh, but I can't tell with how much wear is on this thing, just the cracks in it. I, I don't know. It doesn't look reshelled. The screws look like they've never been touched. It just looks extremely well used. Uh, at the very least, it will need a new joystick. Drift aside, the seller didn't actually disclose that it only went left and right. <laughs> um, and then I said, well, it should go up and down. So I just kind of forced it and now it goes up and down, but it feels like garbage. Also, it's missing the top grip and I can see that there's a big chunk of plastic missing. So 
it's getting replaced regardless of whether, regardless of any other issues. Now, that's the left Joy-Con. I can't get this thing to turn on whatsoever. The buttons feel like garbage. I'm concerned that there's water damage. This one, on the other hand, uh, the buttons don't feel that much better, but the joystick does, and more importantly, Joy-Con itself seems to work. And notice, so too does the switch, and it connects to the switch. So we can jam that home, you saw it connect, slam that home, nothing. And you can try all you want, it's not connecting. And I did inspect it, you know, there's, there's nothing going on with the pins on this side either. Um, oh, and by the way, the locks are broken on both of these, so that's nice. But right Joy-Con seems to be working. So here's what I'm gonna do to walk through the troubleshooting steps on this. By the way, if you have a working Switch tablet and you're trying to troubleshoot your Joy-Con uh, and it's your only Joy-Con, you probably don't wanna factory reset it because you need to dock your Joy-Cons <laughs> to walk through the startup. So if this tablet works perfectly, we'll never know if this rail is bad because we won't be able to proceed. But I'm gonna work off a hunch here. I'm gonna pull this Joy-Con. Ah, and we got nothing. So it might be the rail. All right, so for troubleshooting purposes, hey, look at that. The Joy-Con does seem to work. That is actually kind of disappointing. I was kind of hoping it was the tablet, or the uh, Joy-Con. Um, what were we doing? I wanted to test the Joy-Con controllers. Uh, test input device. I mean, all the buttons work which I am astounded. <laughs> um, what we're doing, calibrate control stick. Wow, I am blown away <laughs> that that works. <laughs> and here is yet another example of um, no drift. That's nuts. I would have thought for sure if this thing worked, there was no chance it didn't drift, but <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right, so it's not the joint, oh, battery depleted. I guess I'll leave that there for a while, see if it charges. Um, and let's move on to this. I'm pretty sure this is charged. Yeah. Still nothing. So unfortunately, I think it is the rail. And based off of the screws on the back of this thing, I'm concerned that someone's been in here. I am going to attempt to turn it off. I guess you can't really do that without giving Giving her the beans. And I did already check. I didn't get a bonus bonus game or micro SD. But it is what it is. Alright. Oh, dropping joy cons. Let's pull this thing apart and see what's going on. Uh, so first thing I noticed on the left Joy-Con rail, this screw was not fully inserted. So I'm thinking someone's had this apart. They saw something they didn't like, they just put it back together and flipped it. Which, unfortunately, that seems to be more more common than it should be. Um, also, all the, the uh, tri-point screws on the back definitely look like someone's uh, messed around with it. But all of the uh, JIS screws look pretty clean. So, I'm hopeful that if someone's been inside of this, they didn't totally ruin it. But the fact that someone has been inside of this, 
and then they flipped it. Kinda concerns me. Especially since this is one of those as-is auctions. You know, you buy a broken switch and then it doesn't work. What are you supposed to do? Complain? That's not how that works. At the very least, though, ooh. At the very least, though, um, I'm not too concerned. I should be able to replace whatever is broken. Hopefully, it's not water damage on the main board. My stripped screws. Helps if I use the correct size bit, doesn't it? Yeah, that's better. It's well used. But I could tell that just by how shiny the thing is. And just the fact that that's there actually makes me feel like maybe someone hasn't been inside of this. Because that's such an easy thing to clean. The wrong bit. Oh, no, that was the right bit. There we go. Also, the fact that it does not appear to be missing screws is actually pretty promising. SD reader looks perfectly fine. Same with the connectors. And let's see if I got totally ripped off. Come on. There we go. So, if someone's been in here, that's the original thermal paste. Battery's not bulging. Uh, what was it? This Joy-Con? Left, yeah. That doesn't appear to be fully inserted. I'm gonna pop that out. I'm gonna use a more appropriate tool than that. We're just gonna reseat this cable. Try at least. Water damage indicator isn't tripped. I don't see any corrosion anywhere um yeah i'm thinking whatever's wrong with this it's a physical problem with oh it's definitely a physical problem with the rail well there we go we just need a new rail i guess let me go ahead and uh pop the other switch apart so i can pull the rail from that and uh at least test this thing out i will Be right back. Is that low battery? Oh, that's unfortunate.
Still, I don't know how this happens if it hasn't been opened. The rail is just totally, totally ripped. And I don't know of any workaround to walk through the initial setup. I've also done zero research on that. Did I already turn that off? I did. Oh, shoot. I gotta wait for it to start up. That's fine, I can start pulling screws out. not the one I want to pull out. Oh no. <laughs> okay, well I guess I'll find that later. These screws are coming out so much easier when they're not stripped. Miracle. Granted, it would have helped if I was using the correct driver from the get-go. That's on me. doesn't matter anymore. Oh, I never screwed that in all the way. Whoops. Almost like I knew I'd be in here again. Careful of this, do not get thermal paste everywhere. Pop this out. I see people do this all the time with metal tweezers, and that just seems foolish to me. Because, you know, metal conductive. If you can't do it with your fingies, which I'm struggling with. What the plastic spudger is for. That way we don't accidentally try and boot the switch with half the hardware connected. Alright, so I need this rail. And actually. Before I even continue trying to extract that, let us 
take apart the broken one first. So I can see exactly how much I need to take it apart. And that screw needs to come out. That is not looking promising. Oh, it's just stuck down. That's easy enough. I wonder if there was a problem with this switch and someone started taking it apart without realizing that they did not need to take out all of the rail screws. You only need to take out that middle one to pop the rear cover off. And then once they got all of the rail screws out, the rail did what the rail is wont to do. And it did that. Oh no. Sounds like something's stuck in there. Oh, no, we're fine, we're fine. I'm gonna try my best. Wait, what are you doing? Avoid damaging this rail. I dangled it precariously before. Oh, and I forgot to take out this screw. I don't think that's strictly necessary, but. Just in case, you know. that up, slide it out. Slide that in, mostly. And if this works, I'll just let this rail live here for now because the other switch, I use it with a pro controller anyway. Not too concerned if I can't charge Joy-Cons with it. Give it a go. There's one. Boom. Hey, like them apples. Later. Hmm. I suppose we can set it to today's date. Two. Yep. And it is. Later.
Oh, the touch screen seems to work. So that's nice. And of course this was factory reset, so there's not going to be any goodies on it. But, oh, and it's even 13.0. So this was very recently used. All right, let's try Switch game. Boom. Seems to work. I don't actually want to sit and listen through that, but there we go. It's already fully charged. I charged it earlier. I kind of cheated. Uh, but let us try out the dock here. I've got an OEM Nintendo dock in an aftermarket housing, plugged in with an OEM Nintendo power supply to my capture card. I'm not going to overlay the footage. You'll just have to take my word for it, assuming it works. a hard time lining it up because the uh, back is off but yeah it's working fine so there we go I've got a perfectly working switch it appears let us try that one And I never tested this Joy-Con. Oh, I suppose let's... Well, that one seems to work fine too. I'm going to replace this one as well anyway, because the uh, grip is all messed up, but works fine. Uh, why don't I have... Oh, it doesn't drift, but the stick does physically get stuck. <laughs> Controller buttons, that's what I wanted. Ooh! We have no ZR. Oh, no, yeah, no ZR. Everything else works. So I think I will um, do a separate video for the Joy Cons because we're going to mod the crap out of these. Uh, I don't like how that feels. That makes me kind of nervous, but I think we'll be able to fix it anyway. Ooh, I never tested. Controller. I have no SR button either. Um, that's not huge on my priority list because I have never once used my Joy-Cons like this with these buttons. It's a nice to have, but yeah. This one works fine though. So yeah, at this point, uh, I just gotta let these charge and that's pretty much it. Um, I suppose let's go ahead and button this thing back up.
definitely shouldn't work on it while it's on. But here we are. I'm not going to bother repasting it because I'm, I'm going to be in this thing again probably very soon. Really not concerned. There we go. Now that that is working, I am very happy with my purchase. I will need to um, get a new rail, but those are pretty cheap. You can get basically every part for these things on online these days. Uh, literally to the point where you could just piecemeal build your own switch if you want. Uh, ooh, we need to jam that in. Definitely shouldn't do this while it's on. But, uh, there we go. Easy peasy. Oh, I'm not going to put those screws in. Those things are very stripped. And I did not help. I missed a screw. I thought that seemed like too few. Right there. Okay. I mean, that's what I get, but it's also my only left Joy-Con charger now, so... There's only so much we can do about that. Oh, shit, this screw is for the motherboard. <sighs> nope, that has thermal paste on it now, doesn't it? Yep. Definitely don't want to do this while it's plugged in. While the battery's plugged in. Just making sure that wire doesn't pinch. No good, the fan works. So yeah, I think my earlier conclusion was correct based off of what I saw once I got this thing open. I think someone tried taking this apart, ripped up the Joy-Con rail, and then realized they were getting in way over their head and just stopped. I don't know why they were taking it apart. Um, maybe this was a kid owned or something. And I mean, you know how kids are. I don't know about you guys, but at a certain age, I took everything apart. Didn't matter. Didn't matter what it was. It, if it had screws and I had a screwdriver that fit it, 
it was coming apart. We'll probably reshell this thing at some point. In the meantime, that hair will come out. Yeah, 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 low battery. All right, there we go. Oh, wait, I'm still missing these four screws. Those ones are going to go in the trash, though, and I am going to replace them with Where are my tweezers. I don't know how I lost them. One. Two. Three, four, how convenient. That screw pitch, thread pitch, does not match. I think these are all the same. I bet that is the correct thread pitch, though. It's not the correct screw, though. Shoot. That's the same. Yeah, that's also incorrect. Well, shoot. I don't have any screws that are the correct pitch. I don't know what these are from if they're not from the switch. So I guess that means I'm not replacing those screws. Yeah, screw it. I'll have to get it some other time. There you go. Can't even tell it's been modified. Or rather, because it hasn't been modified. Can't even tell it's not mint. Cool, so I will get, um, yeah, they're charging up just fine. I will get new locks for these. Um, I don't know, you guys tell me what you want to see. I'm, I'm open to ideas. I know I wanted to do something, I just didn't have anything particular in mind. So, I don't know, let me know. The blue one might need a battery. I will... Pay more attention to that off off screen. Not gonna waste too much time here with that. I'm going to put this rail on though, just for uh, just for.
just so I have a place to put my Joy-Cons. But I will have to replace this rail. And I'm thinking maybe we can try modding in the new rails for the OLED switch. Apparently they're improved in some way. But they're also compatible with the old Joy-Cons, which means they should be electrically the same. Though I don't know how easy it is going to be to uh, jam it in. I wonder if you can get just the actual connector bit. Because if so, that might be the way to go. I forgot a screw. I thought so. Oh, I never tested the micro SD. Yep. Seems to work. Oh, shit. I don't know what that was, but I hope it's not deleting. Oh, I hit the power button. That's what that was. Well, maybe that's why they tried opening it, because the shell's all messed up. Oh well, doesn't matter, let's carry on. I got that in, I got that in. That's it. I'm not gonna bother putting the ribbon cable in. There's literally no purpose. Oh, you know what? Before I continue, I need to show this off because I think it's important that this information at the very least spreads before other people do exactly what I did. And that will make more sense in just a second. Pop the battery out again. And let us take a look at the EMMC module I have in here. So I have been pretty open about the fact that I modded my switch and I have a 64 gigabyte EMMC module in here. Well, take a look at this. My module is labeled Odin EMMC X1. Any Nintendo board with an X1, X2, X3, X4, anything like that with an X on the model number, that is a hardware prototype. Um, I didn't back this up. When I got it, very first thing I did was I put backup of my Switch onto it. Didn't read the data. Didn't care. My thought process was, hey, you know, this is formatted for some other Switch. I won't be able to read it anyway. It's encrypted. Doesn't matter. Um, that may not be true. We don't know if hardware prototypes were encrypted. And because I never bothered dumping it, we may never know for sure. Um, it is very likely that 
plenty of these modules exist somewhere that haven't been overwritten. And there are people who are not me, but uh, devs in the hardware scene who care about the data on these modules. They come in both 32 and 64 gigabyte variants. It is very unlikely to find them on the market now because these are from hardware prototypes, which would have been from before the switch was finalized. Um, you can still find the 32 gigabyte ones listed and you will probably find them with uh, the Odin EMMC branding in the listing pictures, but those listing pictures are several years old at this point, and the actual module you receive might not be an Odin EMMC, it might just be a hack EMMC, which is the switch retail model number, hack 001. So, the reason I'm saying that, if you went out and bought one of those and somehow have not managed to install it in your Switch yet, do everyone in the hardware scene a favor. Go ahead and get yours dumped. There's no harm in plugging it into an exploitable Switch and then uh, booting up Hecate, 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 Hecate. That's what it's, it's probably what it's called. That name makes a little bit more sense knowing that uh, Odin was the code name for this. Um, boot up Hecate, run a full dump, run a second one just for shits and giggles. And then upload that and share it with the people that care. I think it's neat, but I can't do squat with it, so don't tell me. Also, probably don't upload it publicly because Nintendo being Nintendo, they might not be happy with that. But what two friends do with data privately is none of my business. if you catch my drift. Boom. Now that's paired and we can still use it wirelessly. Uh, but the switch is not going to be happy that we're using one Joy-Con wired and the other wirelessly. But at least now they are both paired and usable wirelessly. Ta-da. But uh, there we go. I am going to charge this up because it's kind of low. And um, set this aside while I get a new rail. This one, on the other hand, appears to be working perfectly. Well, almost. Aside from the messed up sticks and the ZR button. And the broken locks. Totally forgot about the broken locks. 
Battery is taking an awful long time to charge and that's making me nervous. Um, but maybe it just needs more time. It's hard to say. I've only been working on this for like less than an hour and the Joy-Cons have been plugged in for less than half that time. So it is what it is. I will uh, order some parts and I will catch you guys next time. And again, let me know what you guys want to see because I'm open to try new things. I bought this literally so I could try new things. Um, I'm leaning towards that Extreme Ray LED kit. That that could be pretty cool to check out. Um, but at bare minimum, these things are getting new locks and new sticks and potentially new batteries. If nothing else, I mean, these are... Uh, are these release model? No idea. Because there's no date on them. But being that this is a patched Marico, or no, excuse me, a patched Arista, potentially a patched Arista, it's not a Marico. This means it is probably 2018, which means it's still three years old. So plenty worn, no harm in new batteries, but I'll at least let them charge and see what happens then. Anyway, that's enough rambling. Thanks for watching. This, I, I honestly thought this was gonna be a lot quicker. I didn't think it was going to be the rail itself that's busted, but it is what it is. And uh, I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. All right, Sumi, I got a little impatient. Started tearing down the controller. Um, I will put this back together once I've made an assessment. I just want to get parts ordered um, so that next time I can go into this with everything I need. Um, luckily, I think I have pretty much everything but the locks. I'm really not too concerned about that. Uh, what was I doing? Controller. I want to go test input, test controller buttons. I want to see if this button physically works, which it does. That's what I thought. The problem was a physical one. The clips on the button itself are broken, so instead of pressing down on the button, the actual tact switch, it was just kind of flexing in there. You can see all these parts that fell out when I uh, got it open. And I think we're going to run into the same thing with... Uh, that. Oh no, that one's not working. Neither of these are working now. I'm thinking let's just replace this whole subboard. Ooh, that one worked. But I can't get this button working. Pretty sure that's the same one. I was having trouble with earlier. Based on the fact that the light's going out, I'm guessing there are deeper problems with this. And with how inexpensive these sub boards are, really not too concerned about um, trying to repair this one. I think I'll just replace it. And that way we can do some uh, LED modding at the same time, because I can't get the SR button working. I'm pressing it and I'm pressing it, and we've got nothing. I got SL working, but no. SR. But yeah, I will probably replace this subboard too because that fell off. That's not supposed to fall off. And even though it does work, I'd rather just you know spend the dollar right now or however much this board costs and just make sure that it's reliable. Um, everything else about the Joy-Con does seem fine. I haven't torn it down any further than this. I don't think I need to though because everything else did work. Uh, if there is any water damage, it is extremely minimal. I think we'll be good. So I am going to get this button back up. Or hell, maybe I'll just throw it in a uh, baggie because there's not much I can do. This battery is fine in this controller. I don't know if the battery in this one is fine. So maybe we will order we maybe I will order some batteries 
or a battery, put this battery in that controller and then replace the battery in this one. Because uh, this Joy-Con does seem to be in worse physical shape but better electrical shape, aside from the battery itself. So if we undock that... Oh, now it's showing charged! Good lord, I swear, these batteries were, or these Joy-Cons were charging for the same amount of time. This one, oh wait, no. The rail was dead on this, so this one needed longer to charge. Never mind. Um, I forgot this Joy-Con was already somewhat charged when I got it. This one was stone dead, so of course it took longer to charge. But, there we go. And now I have a half disassembled Joy-Con. But yeah, you can see how messed up that shoulder button was with how just totally screwed up that spring is. That is not supposed to be that shape. It's supposed to be that shape. Nice and round and rolly. But yeah, I need new buttons at the very minimum. I need a new mid-frame at the very minimum. And then I would like to replace these two subboards. Button subboards there. Otherwise, that's it, man. Surprisingly good shape. Not nearly as bad as I thought.